Over the past year, I've received many requests on doing a video that talks about triggering your Canon camera running CHTK with your autopilot. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to trigger based on distance with the APM 2.6, and I'll share what I've found to be the easiest way to do that with this modded USB cable. Now, there are other ways to do this, and this is actually going to be a precursor to a video that I'll do that shows how to accomplish this with a Pixhawk, but keep in mind we get five volts out to trigger the Canon. The Pixhawk does not provide us five volts. I think it's about 3.7. So we have to actually step that voltage up. Before we get started, I also want to mention this awesome mapping setup. This was sent to me from Ruben at Sweep Wings. Now you know that I have APM in here. He actually has a version in the mail that will have the cutouts and everything spaced properly for Pixhawk. So I'm going to cover the APM in this video. And then when this new juggernaut from Sweep Wings gets here, we'll dive into the Pixhawk. So let's start with the essentials. Obviously we need the Canon. This is the SX260 and we have CHDK going. So let me go ahead and load that. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, I do have a video that I'll post that shows how to install CHDK and get it running. Now the key here, we need to set up our remote parameters. So go down, we want to enable remote, have switch type set to one push, control mode normal, the rest are the defaults. I'm not going to demonstrate a custom script, all I'm going to demonstrate is using the USB trigger from APM to basically take our photos. Now there's all sorts of scripts as you guys probably know. I'll do a video or two in the future that talks about some of the interesting things you can do with scripts. So the other key component is this mini USB cable. This is actually one that came with the PowerShot, so I know there are different types of USB cables, so just make sure you get the proper one. And here's the other end. I measured this out to probably a little bit over a foot, and this is the other half of the clipped end. You'll see that there are actually four little cables in here, but the only ones we're concerned with are power and ground, red and black. So what I did is basically expose those cables and then solder these servo connector pins to them and place them in here. Now it's real important that you get your connections correct. Now if you think about how this would plug right down into APM, on the inside rail we have signal. So this was our red cable coming out of the USB and then on the outside we have ground. We actually don't have the middle pin. Let me demonstrate that connection. We have signal on the inside, ground on the outside rail. We're going to go into port A9 so that's one, two, three, four and that fifth one right here is going to be A9. Go ahead and plug that in and then we'll plug the other end of the cable into the USB port on the Canon. And one tip from my personal experience, make sure you lay everything out before you cut your cable. I cut this a little long, so I guess better long than short, but ultimately I'll go back and trim that up a bit. So now I'll go ahead and power everything up. We'll connect to Mission Planner via the 3DR radio, and then we'll begin our parameter settings. Okay, everything is now powered up. We have our 3DR radio connected to Mission Planner. With Mission Planner connected, we go to the initial setup screen. Underneath optional hardware, we'll click on the camera gimbal setting. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice a shutter drop down. We'll go ahead and set that to relay. Now what that will do is that will trigger the pin A9 on the APM where we plugged in our USB cable. CHDK is loaded. You'll see there's alt mode. I'm going to take it out of alt mode by hitting play and I'll tap the shutter. Now we're in remote shutter trigger mode. You can see our camera screen on the left over here. I'm going to go back to the flight data screen. We're just going to do a quick test to make sure that we have everything wired up and configured properly. So on this flight data screen, I'll right click and hit trigger camera now and you can see it'll take a picture do it again just to show you everything is functioning properly 
Now let's move on to setting this to trigger based on distance. So what I like to do is I'll go to the config and tuning screen, then click on the full parameter list. I'd like to use the find button and what I'll type is CAM underscore and hit OK and that will show me all the parameters that match that string. The parameters we're concerned with are the cam trig type. Now we'll leave the default of one. So that's set to relay, which we just demonstrated. We have the cam trig distance. Now this is the most important. I believe it's set at 60 something meters by default. I can't remember, I've been playing around with it a few different values. Based on your altitude, flight speed, your camera sensor size, all of that will ultimately impact the distance that you want to set even the amount of overlap you want in your photos. But for the case of this demonstration, I'm going to set it to one, just because here in the garage, our GPS will be bouncing around and over a meter, and that should ultimately trigger the camera. And I'm just doing that mainly because it's a pretty nasty day outside, very cold, wet, and I'd rather do this indoors. And lastly, there's the cam duration. Right now it's set to one. That one represents one tenth of a second, so that's sufficient. So now I'll go ahead and write those params. And there's just one more that we care about, so I'll do another find, and I'll search for relay, and hit OK. And you'll see that relay underscore pin, this value is 13, which means it's set up for APM2 A9 pin, which is where we plugged this cable in earlier. So that looks good. Our camera's off, let me get CHDK loaded again, and we'll do this test. Camera's sitting there, we're in the garage, GPS is getting a fix, and you can hear it take a photo. Like I said, that GPS is bouncing around, triggering beyond one meter, and ultimately firing the shutter from the pin nine on APM. And you see it goes again. So not the best way to test it. What you ultimately want to do is have a good day where you can set this up and put this at a more reasonable value. Let's just say 30, 50, 100 meters and then go outside, walk around. And what will happen as you walk that distance, the camera will trigger. And let me just share one last tip, which is probably my favorite that I discovered several months ago. This is your survey tool and you can go in here and you know draw your polygons tell it what camera you're using altitude all that but if you look down here at the bottom left it gives you a distance between images and you can see just in this test case it says 82 meters so if i were actually going to let's say increase my altitude there's 140 meters it tells me my distance between images is now 96 meters and that equation factors in a lot of things like in grid options you can see your overlap and your side lap now normally something like pix4d recommends something like 75 percent so just play around with these values you can see that the distance between images is a lot less it's 48 meters just to be able to cover that overlap just wanted to share that tip last year i was doing a lot of photos with the intervalometer and I've really enjoyed doing this based on distance. So we have a lot of great tools in front of us. It's ultimately just knowing how to use them. So I wanted to share that and hope you guys found it useful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and be on the lookout for the Juggernaut with Pixhawk setup video as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.